My principles are more important than the money or my title. Muhammad Ali. Hey, Hustlers, Christian here, host of The Hassle Show. Thank you so much for tuning in today to episode nine of The Hassle Show, where we have real, no filter conversations with successful entrepreneurs. I'm super excited to have you here and thank you so much. I cannot thank you enough for being with me for nine episodes. And if, if, you're, if you've been listening to every single one of them, I hope you are enjoying them as much as I enjoy recording and editing and putting everything together. And if you're new to The Hassle Show, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now as you will be helping a lot of other people to find this show and to find the, the motivational content that we're putting together and all the entrepreneurial journeys that we're sharing, okay? So please help us to reach more people by hitting the subscribe button, okay? There's, it's completely free, so there's nothing like, we're not gonna charge you anything for subscribing to it. So hit that subscribe button right now, either you're on, on, on our YouTube channel or on the audio podcast experience. Just hit it and you'll, you'll be notified as well every time that we post new new episodes and that they go live, okay? I'm very excited for today's episode as I'm going to share with you the story of Jeff Hunter from 9010 Lifestyle. And, you know, it's very funny because I was talking to Jeff before we booked our call, before we jumped into our video call, and he was telling me that he's the anti-hustler, right? So that got me thinking, it's like, what do you mean with anti-hustler? You know, you got to come to the show because I don't know what that means. <laughs> and we had a blast recording this. We truly did. And, and, and I learned a lot of outsourcing and tips on how to, you know, 10x your productivity by outsourcing properly. But not only that, you know, he shares really good stories of why he went from being a super successful six-figure project manager to starting his own outsourcing agency and he's just killing it right now and he's crushing it and it was a real pleasure to have him on the show. But before we jump into the call, remember that all the show notes and the way to get in contact with, with our guest today is going to be available at thehassleshow.co forward slash THS9 along with our free book club where you can find and discover new entrepreneurial books as we as we read and, 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 and review them. We'll be posting them there along with a lot of motivational content we're going to be creating just for you, okay? And if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button as it will mean the world to me, okay? So without further ado, Jeff Hunter from 9010 Lifestyle. All right, Hustlers. So on today's episode nine, uh, we have Jeff Hunter today joining us. Welcome, Jeff. Welcome for myself. I'm so happy to be on the Hustle Show to, to prove some anti-hustle. <laughs> awesome. I love it. You know, I've been reading about your story and I know it's an anti-hustler 100%. So that's why you want, you know, I wanted to have you in the show and talk to us about that anti-hustle thing. Well, I... First off, I want to say it's not that I'm anti-hustle. I, I guess I should I should recorrect that. Um, it's just that people are spending way too much of their time doing the wrong things. And I think that if you're running uh, a race and you're running really fast, but you're running the wrong direction, um, that's the wrong type of hustle. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and I'm actually looking forward for it for for our chat today. Hopefully, we can connect later on because I do need some help, man. I'm going I'm going out with so many things doing going on right now to launch this this show. Oh, I hear you. Podcast, yeah, so podcast. There's a lot that goes on in a podcast, man. <laughs> mad respects and mad props for for getting to it. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, I mean, I know I know a little bit about you. Uh, you know, you were a very successful project manager. Basically, had the dream job. I'm I'm guessing you always dream of having that job and you were doing pretty well. What happened, man? How did that transition, how, what, what happened to that project manager to what you are now, the, the virtual assistant guy? Funny that you say that. <laughs> uh, it all started with Gantt charts. Um, for me, I hate, I don't know if you've ever known what a, a Gantt chart is and project management, there is a timeline of things that need to get done in your business or in a project. And there's a critical path. A critical path is this has to be done before something else can get done. And you have to build out these Gantt charts when you're doing projects, especially if you have a lot of different people involved in the project. 
Um, and I've been in IT and, and project management for the past 10 years. So I've seen a fair share of Gantt charts. And actually, that's where it all started. I actually was trying to find someone online out of desperation because I, I knew that my time was not spent well doing Gantt charts. I knew that as a project manager, I was spending way more time doing my expenses, doing my mileage reporting, doing my meeting minutes, doing my uh, Gantt charts, and all the stuff that really wasn't actually project management. So um, that's how it all started was I, I actually hired a virtual assistant to help me do a Gantt chart. Um, it was actually not a good relationship. It was if someone from Pakistan or something, I don't remember where it was. It was so long ago. Uh, it was five years ago. And it was just... But I, but I had that first taste of freedom when actually it got done. You know, we only had that one thing that was done, but it was such a relief. And then I knew that I knew it was possible. Once I knew it was possible, then I started thinking, what else could I have someone do for me? Right? That's right. Wow, I love that, man. And, and that's something because you see that entrepreneurship, you know, you outsource or you use any website out there to hire somebody from another country and get it affordably. But I've actually never heard of an employee outsourcing their jobs. That's pretty interesting, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get a lot of flack for that. <clears throat> and actually, I had to hide my virtual assistants um, because um, A, I became one of the top five project managers at Philips. Um, and that was, you know, that was a big achievement for me. I was young. I was probably 26, 20. No, I, let me think here. Actually, I was, I was in, I was almost 30. I actually, I was almost 30 at that time. Um, and I had really had a lot to prove, you know, I think, you know, people talk about sexism and racism and stuff. I'll tell you what the true thing is. Um, ageism. Uh, when you're a young guy in a corporation where the average age of people in your position is like 45 to 50 and you're 29, 30 years old and you're just kicking ass, like you get a lot of attention um, and it's not always the great kind. So uh, for me, as an employee, looking at what is the best use of my time, I'm super motivated. I always want to be the best at what I do. I'm very competitive. My son's the same way. <laughs> my dad's the same way. It's a family trait. Um, I love, I just love to, to win, right? And I just wanted a way to, to take it to the next level. And having someone who was doing that, see, I, were, I was like in a corporation, so they wouldn't hire someone for me. You'd have to go through HR and this and that. So I had to hire my virtual assistants. And actually, that's kind of how the struggle began was because I started doing really well. I started telling other people about my virtual assistants and that's when things started to crumble was that, oh no, he's got a virtual assistant thing. And then, you know, then I went through eight managers and I got all the stuff dialed in. But the, the truth of the thing was when I actually got interviewed for, I actually had three promotions already. Okay. Three promotions. I actually just got my fourth promotion two weeks before I quit on February 29th leap day. So it was, it was a definite challenge for me to kind of uh, figure out a way to where I could have help for, for my day job, you know, things that, uh, that I had to do in my business, but yet walk that fine line of not crossing any sort of ethical boundaries. Um, because the truth is, there's absolutely no way that I should be doing a Gantt chart. It just, it's hours and hours of time consuming stuff and it's brainless. I have to just write down the different things that I have to do for a project. And then it has to go into this little chart. Like it's completely useless for an actual project management skill set. I hear you. Yeah. And we, you know, we've, to all the hustlers that are listening right now, I'm sure that if they're in a job and you know, they're, they're hating what they're doing. We all gone through that. I mean, there's a lot of tasks that I, there is no point of doing, but at the same time, you know, I work in a big corporation as well before, and I know how you know, they're pretty, pretty nosy about things of their information, their data going out to somebody that is not recruited yeah. with the company. Do you have well, any? That, well, that is where the line is. See, you don't, you can't give out inf any information, company information to something, right? So you have to make sure that if you have a job where you're supposed to be doing something, that the information that you delegate is actually not sensitive information. So that's, that's absolutely correct. There are lots of things I wish I could outsource in my job, but I couldn't. 
<laughs> There's lots of things <laughs> right. that I wish I could have. For me, that's that's why I started the nine ten life. The the nine ten life is about I don't care if you have a job or an entrepreneur or you're a business owner or whatever the case be, there is a best way to use your time. There's a best way for your team to use their time. And if everybody is truly working at maximum capacity, they're doing that 10% of their life that actually matters. Uh, that came about because I have a client who uh, I did this exercise with. I do this exercise with all my clients. Um, and no joke, it's a, a great exercise. Basically, we look at everything that you do, right? If you guys are listening to this right now, I want you guys to seriously take action right now. Do this. Write down everything that you do in your business. Just write it down. Like what is what you, I mean, what do you have to do, right? And then find out, like start crossing things off that aren't valuable. And, and by, by the way, when I mean valuable, I mean, is it something that only you can do? Is it something that is unique to you or can someone else do that? Like putting audio bumpers on the beginning and end of your, of your podcast, it's really not the best use of your time. The best use of your time is building relationships. It's understanding people. It's interviewing people. That's where your time is. It doesn't make a lot of sense you spending hours on end trying to patch up audio files and do all this type of stuff for your podcast, right? <laughs> I'm assuming yeah, that's Yeah, that's exactly know, right. <laughs> And, and I know people that have podcasts. I know people that run businesses and they're busy creating social media posts. They're busy putting graphics together. They're busy writing their blog posts. I haven't written a blog for probably two years. I record myself. I send it to a VA. She writes up a summary. She puts it together. I approve it. Then some graphics are made by one of the graphics people and it's gone. It's online. And all it is is just them listening to something like this right here that we're doing here and turning it into a blog. So it's all about time effectiveness. If you write down everything in your schedule and find out what is actually bringing you the most value, I guarantee you, if you write down 10 things that you're supposed to get done this week, one of them will have more value than all the other nine put together. And that's the one thing that you're probably not doing because you're focused on the wrong stuff. I love that, man. It's totally true. That's, that's exactly how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to. We're all there, man. Yeah, yeah. Trying to multitask, trying to figure it out, and that's you know, why I was excited to be on your show today because I know there's a lot of people hustling, and I know there's a lot of people. You know, they've glorified the hustle. They've made the hustle sexy, right? Like, busy is a great thing. Like, hey, man, how you been? Oh man, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Like, wow, dude, congratulations, man. You're so freaking busy. And that, and, and you know what? That's that's funny because I saw that. I mean, when I was in corporate America. It was it was something that they were proud of to see that to say that they were busy. Yeah, and, it, and it's like I mean, what are you proud for for saying that you're so busy? <laughs> so it's crazy, man. So That's why I put the shirt on for you today, man. I, I literally put the shirt on for you today. Cool, I love it, man. <laughs> any one of those, any one of those. Let me tell you something. I just came back from Cancun, Mexico. Okay, lovely place. Um, uh, Spent 11 nights there, or 11 days, 10 nights. Went to went my very first time in Cancun. Usually I go to like Puerto Vallarta area, or last year we, I took my family to the Philippines for 30 days. Um, during the summer when the kids are out of school, you know, I like to do some fun stuff and get out. And lo and behold, my business ran. And see, that's the thing about the hustle. A lot of times, a lot of these hustlers, right? And no disrespect to you or anyone here listening to the show, but I want you guys to be honest and real with yourselves. If you didn't show up to work for a week or 10 days, would your business go? Would your business go on without you? And I think a lot of the times the answer is no. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. That's what I'm trying to really get in everyone's head and not in a condescending way, but are you putting the systems in place? Are you getting the team built out? Are you really getting the systems in place to transition from the business operator, the person who has to be there tinkering the tools to the owner who's overwatching, who's overseeing and making sure that things are going smoothly. There's a transition there. And that's the transition that I've, I've been able to help hundreds of people do. And, and myself, even for myself, I mean, once you get there, once you get there, man, the hustling you can do when you're not actually having to hustle in your business, right? You're working on your business and not in your business. I love that, man. 
So going back to your story, you mentioned that you just had a, you know, two weeks before you quit, you had a promotion and this was the fourth or fifth promotion. What it's happened there? Yeah. What, what was that transition? Like what happened? So I officially got a new title. I was project manager three. Uh, I was, a I was the seat most senior um, in the organization. I had been there for four years. Uh, I had mentored about a half dozen, I'd say six or seven new project managers. At the time when I quit, I was actually mentoring two project managers at the same time. Um, but see, the problem is, is that I got overwhelmed. And not only did I get overwhelmed, but I felt undervalued. And those are two things that you don't want to ever have at the same time um, with someone who works for you, right? Uh, the, let me first address the overwhelm part. The overwhelm part was because my grandfather's life was literally hanging on a thread. Um, he's 94 years old at the time. Um, he had been diagnosed with valley fever. He had lost tons of blood. He had shrunk 100 pounds in the past six months. Um, and uh, basically, I knew that, you know, I needed to spend time with him. Uh, I, my son, his name's Jesse, named after my grandfather, Jesse, um, never even got to know him. And uh, <clears throat> I'm trying not to get emotional here. <laughs> and um, I wanted to move in with him. And I wanted my son to really know, uh, to know him. And it, you know, when you have a six figure day job and you talk to your wife about leaving your corporate job and moving in with your friggin' grandpa for the last two months, it's, it was a challenging decision, you know, to make. And, um, um, I look back on it now and, <clears throat> you know, that was a, <clears throat> one of the driving factors. It wasn't the main factor, believe it or not, <clears throat> as much as I'd love to say, <clears throat> I quit my job for my grandpa. I didn't, <clears throat> to be honest with you, um, my online business, my virtual assistant business at that time didn't make enough to support me and my lifestyle and, uh, and my family. And uh, I was really afraid to, to make the leap into entrepreneurship because I'm not. I still today, I still don't consider myself an entrepreneur. I think that's a really overplayed word. Um, I'm a virtual guy. You know, I've, I've learned how to manage virtual teams and, and build teams and get things done. Like that's how I still, that's how I feel about myself. Um, but what's crazy is that when I was at that corporate job, I loved it. I just want to flat out say, I loved my job. I really did. And um, it was just a shame. I had my eighth manager, you know, it's when you have eight managers in four years, it does a toll on you already. Um, and then when they gave me the promotion, what they did was they actually moved me from an hourly based position when I was working 10 to 12 hours a day to a salaried position. So I didn't have paid travel anymore. I didn't have any of the perks that you get from working the long hours, but they still expect you to work the long hours. So actually, even though they gave me a promotion, they put a shiny little sticker on me, I was actually probably making less every year. So when I first got my paycheck, I got my very first paycheck after being a salaried promoted employee. Um, and I looked at it and I was just like, wow, you know, about 20% of my paycheck used to be overtime and I don't have that anymore. And it was really horrendous. And I said, you know what? They don't value me. That's what it came down to. They don't value me. And I said, you know what's more valuable than this paycheck is the ability for me to take my last paycheck down and, and be with my grandpa for the last two months of his life. And that was exactly what I did. I knew that I was, I was you know, undervalued there. I left. I, I took a big leap. I told my wife, look, we might even have to stay here at my grandpa's for a little bit longer because I need to get my stuff straightened out in the Philippines where my team is. I have a lot of my team in the Philippines. I have two offices in the Philippines. And I said, at that point in time, though, it was still a hobby. It wasn't like a business to me. I mean, it was. It was fun to do, but it still wasn't like my core. So I packed up my wife and my, and my, and my son, and uh, we went, we lived with my grandpa, and then we went to the Philippines for 30 days and developed out my business, hired a consultant to rein things in. And now, looking back, it's probably the best decision I ever made with, in my life. I was able to spend time with my grandpa. I was able to have a close relationship with my family. I was able to not work an 18-hour work day, right? And I have absolute freedom. I have absolute business freedom. I can work on my business. I can oversee, make sure things are going well. 
and I just help other people build their own businesses virtually, which is what I love to do. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So you basically build, you know, your dream entrepreneurial job and what you're doing, you know, with passion and not only did it give you the freedom, but you're now giving that freedom to other entrepreneurs and other business owners, which is amazing. Exactly. And you know what? Yesterday I did my web, I did a webinar for the 910 Life and um, it was, it was awesome. And I had so many people show up and you know, that's what reevaluates. It, it kind of reinvigorates that value to me is that like when I'm able to share that message, I put these workshops on, I try to do it on a weekly basis. Sometimes I, I don't when I'm traveling, but um, I try to do it on a weekly basis just to kind of help other people with the knowledge, you know, like the, the problem, the reason why people don't do it is because they don't know how, and it causes paralysis when people don't know how to do something, they just don't do it. Right. They're afraid to do it wrong. They're afraid to hire the wrong people, but there's actually a simple way to do it. There's a really simple way to find the right people to work for you that want to prove themselves to you and actually, and actually like really genuinely grow with you. You know, most of the people that work for me, they work for me. I have people that work for me for almost four years in the online virtual outsourcing space. That's a lifetime. That's forever. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I've built a team of 50 plus people that, that work for me and my clients and, and people, they, they think that they can't do it. They can, I'll give you the recipe. You can, you can sign up right now. I've helped clients start agencies that compete with me and I love them all. You know, Chris Ducker, who is, who owns virtual, uh, 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 which is virtual staff finder. He's a mentor of mine. I'm in his mastermind. I love the guy, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I have uh, OK Relax is one of these virtual assistant companies. He was a client of mine. I showed him. I even gave him his one of my virtual assistants. I said, hey, man, why don't you hire one of my VAs and do your own thing? And he did. Like, I just want people to feel that freedom. There's a real freedom. There's that first taste of freedom that you get when you finally get something off that to-do list and it's done reliably and effectively by a virtual assistant every time. You don't have to worry about it. It is the most amazing feeling you'll ever feel um, outside of maybe having a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a good comparison, man. <laughs> so looking back at those, that moment when you moved back with your, with your grandpa and you started this hobby, you know, like you call it, it was just on the side. You started seeing it as a business. Did you start doubting yourself that you could turn that into a business? Yeah. I, I had to hunker down. I told my wife, I said, you know, I don't know when this is going to make enough money for even us to move out um, from my grandpa's place. And I was so blessed, you know, cause I made, I made a good amount of money when I worked, um, in the corporate world, you know, it was a solid six figure income. And I was really excited to find out that after I had moved in <clears throat> with him and things were really starting to kick off into gear, basically from February, uh, when I realized I'm out of here, uh, March ish, from March to about June, I was able to completely replace the income that I had lost in three months. And here's what the craziest part is by the end of last year, my accountant, who's by the way, also the Philippines, her name's Iris. Hi, Iris. If you're listening, um, Iris is, uh, an actual, uh, she has an MBA from a very prestigious university in uh, Davao, uh, which is, a uh, it, it's a devout city in the Philippines and she's been doing my taxes. <laughs> she's been doing all my accounting for the past two years. And she told me flat out, she said, you're not going to believe this. She did the calculation. She did the math. She said that I was able to make $5,288 every single week last year. And I was just like, it was, it was surreal, you know, because, uh, you know, that's about what I used to make. Uh, you know, I used to make a little you know, about, half of that um, when I worked in the corporate job. So I actually was able to double my income by leaving my job. And that's before I even started doing some of the stuff I'm doing now. That's just one business. See, that's why it's so important to transition from business operator to business owner is because you, you have blind spots and you can't see what you can't see. You don't know what you don't know. And when you're in the trenches, Sometimes it's hard to look up, you know, because you're busy digging that hole. You're busy doing that hustle when there's people around you that want to help you out, man. You just got to reach out and grab their hand, you know? I love that. 
And I think, you know, the, I kind of feel identified with the stories that you're sharing. And I'm sure that a lot of the, our listeners right now, they're starting out and they're trying to hustle and they're trying to do everything on their own because first, it's hard to find someone reliable, to be honest with you. Second, you know, putting systems in place, training, you know, everything that it goes along is just scary. So if you don't know what you're doing, you know, I know, I know, if, I know the if feeling. You, if you have... If you have a plan, if you know, if you know, because now I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, sound uh, self-promoting here, but I can tell you, I have been doing this for five years and in the first few years, it really sucked. <laughs> I actually, my very first year I hired and I fired 26 staff, 26. It was really bad. You're right. It was really hard. It was challenging. Uh, I wasted so much time training the wrong people. Um, if you guys don't know, like it, some of you, maybe you haven't taken the step yet, but for some of you that probably have, you've tried hiring people and you've wasted your time training people that just don't work out. It's such a drag. It's really, it's really crippling, you know, to, to invest your time and your money into somebody and it not work out. And, and that's why, in my nine ten life, the training that I put out there, I show people like you can use a lot of great sites. You can use Upwork. You can use Fiverr, even believe it or not. Um, there's lots of great talent out there. Uh, that I think Odesk and maybe some other Elance got chomped up by Upwork now. But there's so many different ways and platforms that you can you can get people. But here's the thing that you that I I'll caution everybody: be weary because there is a a. Uh, most of everything online is the same. You have a name, you have a profile picture and you have a rating. And that is not how you hire someone. Okay. That's not how you hire someone. You want to make sure you have an amazing job description. You want to make sure that that thing is fine tuned. That'll screen out a lot of the bad people. Okay. This is, this is advice that I'm giving you right now. I hope you guys are recording this or, or writing this down somewhere because this is what I've done. This is what I've done to, to hire an amazing staff that stayed with me for, for literally almost four years. Okay. A, make sure you have an amazing job description. B, you want to screen them with a really good question. You want to have a great question, something that you know, if they answer that question, that they actually know what they're talking about. I don't care whatever the industry is or whatever you're trying to have them do, make sure you have a really good screening question. Okay. And then the last thing you want to do is make an offer to them to say, I have a sample task. Okay. Now I go over this in my 910 life program and I have tons of great examples of sample tasks. Um, but, but basically you want to have a, a really quick win. You want to have something that you know is quite a little challenging. Um, so it kind of weeds out to see, okay, look, they were easily able to do this. So um, now, now we're going to try something harder. No, you want to have a challenging sample task for them to do in the beginning something that really proves themselves and you have that obligation to them saying, look, if this works, then I will hire you. Right now, I'm not saying you have them do it for free, although sometimes they will offer to do it for free to win your job. Right. There's a lot of people out there that just want to work um, and they'll prove themselves to you for little to nothing. So that's my three step system there for you guys. I hope that you, that you take that and use it. Don't use the name. Don't use the, don't use, you know, a lot of people out there, they write down what they say they can do, but they can't really do it. So don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into the rating trap either, because there's lots of fake ratings. If you've ever bought something on Amazon, you know, okay. So think about it. Make sure that you have a good test question for these guys. Make sure you have a sample task ready and a really great job description. Super cool, man. I'll definitely grab on your advice there. And I hope that all the listeners, uh, all the hustlers that are listening to us right now, they take note. And the good thing is that we're recording everything so that we can, <laughs> we can share it with them too. <laughs> so you were talking about those, those first months, you know, the first months and you were talking about some of the, you know, it was hard and it was tough emotionally, yeah. physically demanding because you're basically starting out, right? Mm -hmm. How were those six months emotionally in, for you? Ooh, it was really tough. And that right there is where the hustle came in. Okay. Because now even me, the anti-hustler, there are times when you have to put those boots on and you have to roll those sleeves up and you got to get in the trenches because what I want, what I knew, there's a big difference when you, especially when you're hiring people, when you are the provider for people and you've got these mouths to feed, 
there is no room for error because they need to get paid. The people that work for you, they need to get paid. So you have to be successful, right? You cannot stop. So what I did was I figured out what are the core people that I really want to work with? How do I get in front of these types of clientele? So I spent a lot of my time really figuring out exactly the type of people I wanted to be in front of. And, and I found a really interesting thing is that if you are able to offer the right solutions, if you're able to answer the problems, right? If you're able to solve the problems that, that people already have, to the specific type of group that you're looking towards as your client, they will come to you. They will come to you. So um, uh, guys, Facebook Live has literally changed my life. Like I just go on Facebook Live and I just show people the things that I'm doing. I just show people how I'm able to solve real problems using virtual assistants and people message me. I get so many messages on Facebook now. I have to literally turn my notifications off every time I go live because I get like 12 to 15 different messages like, oh, hey, can you hook me up with a VA to do that? <laughs> and and it, it's the same in every business. I don't care if you're a marketing agency, um, if you're running Facebook ads, if you're, if you're a funnel builder or funnel hacker, or if you're a web designer or a graphic designer, or whether you're doing a podcast show, or maybe you're a freelancer that's doing writing, or whatever the hell it is, if you just share your wins with people, if you show people the solutions that you provide, if you bring your people that you've already helped on there, it's going to do work for you. It's going to do work for you. So I did a lot of time in my own lab, just thinking about what are the perfect type of solutions that I can provide? What are the real problems that these people have? And I came up with these solutions. That is something you can't outsource. You can't outsource relationships, okay? I say that a million times. I'll keep, maybe it'll be on my tombstone. You can't outsource relationships. It's just something that you can't do. Like me and you building this relationship right now, we're talking, we're enjoying ourselves, we're having a good time. This is what you should be doing. This is the most valuable use of your time. So how do you leverage a virtual team to do the things that are holding you back from what you should be doing? That's all I've been able to do. That's all I've done is just show people how to leverage people to get their time back. So the doubt, the doubt that I had in my business was that I wasn't going to be able to attract the right type of clientele because I really wanted to make sure that it was a perfect fit on both ends that I was able to come up with the right solutions. So I spent a lot of time figuring out how I could solve real problems for people. That's it. So how, how did that make you feel as far as did you feel uh, proud of what you were doing that you were able to help other people or were, did you just feel that, okay, well, I'm just helping now, but you, you know. know, the biggest joy that I have in my business is, you know, a lot of them call me, <laughs> they call me pop CJ even, um, which in the Philippines is kind of like Godfather type, you know, mentor. <laughs> um, you know, I've had multiple people in the, in the, in the, in my team in the Philippines, uh, you know, try to have me be their Godfather for the kids and stuff, which, I respectfully decline a um, 23 hour flight away if, if they really needed me to be the spiritual guide. <laughs> I don't feel I'm qualified. Um, but, but in all reality, you know, most of the people that work for me, um, they're sole providers. Um, a lot of them are, uh, you know, mothers and they have children. And, um, and I talk about Redora a lot. She's one of my very first team members. She's worked with me for almost four years. When she came to me, it was the worst interview that I've ever had, still to this day, the worst interview. Like, imagine getting on a Skype call and being like, hello, are you there? Hello, and just complete silence, a little scratchy. You know, you're like, okay, that's weird. Um, and then I, the, you, you look at someone's, you know, uh, CV or resume and it says her name, that she's had two years of college, but she dropped out that she has a brand new kid and her husband doesn't have a job. He's going to training to be a seaman. And I'm just like, well, that's not the greatest fit. No job, no education. This is not going to work. So I told her, nah, I need you to get some education. I need you to get some more experience. She messages me back and she says, sir, I just want one more shot. Can you give me one more shot? One more interview. <clears throat> and this was a week later. I give her the second interview and she says, a few things in English. It was bad. <laughs> it was, it was really bad. And then, you know what? 
I just told her, I said, you know what, I really need you to get some education or, or, or some, some experience and, and really uh, show me what you can do. You know, here's the types of things that, that my clients need, you know, learn how to do this and we'll think about it. She sent me an email back that day and she said, sir, um, I'm a college dropout. I have a brand new kid. No one will give me a job. And uh, <clears throat> getting a little emotional, but she says, I will work for you for free as long as it takes to prove my value to you. And I was like, damn, <laughs> like that is a hungry person right there to offer to work for free um, just to prove herself. And I was like, you know, my heart and, you know, my, in my, in my gut, I felt like, how could I say no to this? You know, it's no risk to me. Right. Um, and I, at that time I was actually working an event. I was going to an event and I wanted to have all the contacts, uh, worked out before the event. Cause usually when you have an event, they have a vendors list of all the people that are going to be there. Um, so I had this vendors list of a couple hundred different place of, uh, companies that were going to be there that I wanted to get in front of. And I wanted to find out who these people were in their companies, the CEO, the vice president, if they have one, the marketing director or whatever, because those are the people I usually work with, VPs of sales. <clears throat> and so I gave her this list. I gave her this list and I said, can you find the CEOs and the, the marketing managers or, or the VPs of sales for these companies and go for it. And I was thinking, you know, it was about a month out for the event. I thought maybe it would take her two weeks to get it done. <laughs> I don't even think she slept 48 hours later. She's like, sir, I shared a Google sheet with you. And I'm just like, hold on a second. And I'm looking at the sheet and there's literally golden contact information on the sheet. And I'm like, holy crap. There was hundreds of people that I wanted to be in front of on that sheet. So uh, I immediately hired her by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since then, she's had eight promotions, or no, she's had eight raises and four promotions. She's now the manager overseeing all of my team of 55 plus people. She does all the payroll information, which guess what? She's never known, known how to do before. She does all the payroll. She does all my accounting. She does all my client updates. She does all my client onboarding. It's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable the, the amount of, of talent that's out there that's unexplored, that wants to work, that wants to prove to you what they can do. And that is what makes all of it worth it, is people like Redora, people like Kavika, people like Tana. These are all the people that are kind of my right hand in my business. Um, Kavika does all my inbound sales. She does all inquiries. Uh, Tana is my project manager. She's from Chennai, India. Kavika is from Dominica down in, in the Caribbean. Um, they literally shot part of the, the latest movie. Uh, what was that? The Pirates of the Caribbean there on her island. Like, I, I have an awesome team. They're spread all over the world, and they all work towards the same goal. And guess what? They all want me to be successful. They all love the business, and they're all really proud of what they do. And that is the win-win-win. My clients are happy. My team is happy. I'm happy as hell. And everybody wins. That is a true hustler story, man. I mean, I love, I love, I love the hungry that you, yeah, I, mean, I love that. And, you know, I'm happy that, you know, you gave her a chance and she basically proved herself. So that's pretty awesome. She's, she's a killer, man. And you know what? The, the, she, if she's listening to this, sorry in advance, but you know, the one thing that's really funny about her is that her personality, she is very, very, very dry. Like her humor is not good. And uh, she and a lot of people take her the wrong way. They think she's very rude. She's very obnoxious, very direct, right? She's very direct. But you know what? To be honest with you, it's because she's focused. And I think uh, the entrepreneurs, employees, business owners, everyone, that's the one thing that really is a challenge for everybody is because we're opportunists. We're opportunists. So we have that shiny object syndrome. We always want to go to the next thing. And when you're direct, when you're focused, whatever, people call you anal, right? But you know what? It's called, no, I give a damn and I'm focused. And, and that's what we need more of. And that's the type of hustle that we need is the focus. Exactly. Yeah. Because then, and, and we were talking just one episode before in episode eight, we were just talking about that syndrome of how 
why people see something shiny and they go after it. A couple of months later, they change routes and that's why they don't get anywhere because they're constantly changing. There's no focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that you brought it up. How much growth you can have if you just focus on something and go. Very cool. So now that we're talking about that focus and that driven passion towards your business, was there any hard moments while starting out that you felt like quitting? Many, yeah. My wife almost made me quit a few times. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest things is if you rely on really big clients, you know, that's a trap that we have is you get a really big client. Now, look, I love corporate clients. Don't get me wrong. I have many. Um, but at one point in time, I had a client that was hired 12 of my 50. Well, at the time it wasn't even 50. It was like 30 team. So imagine almost half of your team was by one client. So when that one client had a reorganization and they started cutting people from their team and the sales manager I was working with, the VP of sales, had left the company and gone to another company. I just saw everything in turmoil. I saw everything in turmoil. It was absolutely horrendous because I was at that fork in the road where I'm not in the opportunity. I don't, I'm not in the business of letting people go. I don't want that. I, my job is to hire people and to give them work and to show, show my clients how to use them. So there was a really big fork in the road where I actually said, you know what, I'm going to personally fly to the Philippines. So I've been there eight times or nine times now, I believe where I flew to the Philippines and I worked to train my staff that was there on those 12 accounts to do something else. Because I was like, there's no friggin' way that I'm going to have to let go people from my team because they only know how to do one thing. So that was something that I had to learn the hard way was that cross training is really important. Having people know how to do other things if stuff dries up so they can transition to a new role. That was something that thankfully saved a lot of jobs. Um, and, and I can only say that it, I mean, by the grace of God that worked out and they're still my client today. Thank God. Uh, we just renewed another two year contract with them, but man, I was just on the fence. And, um, you know, the only thing I can say really is that usually when things start to go wrong in your business, it's because your value is wrong. It's because your priorities aren't right. It's because you're not giving the real value that you should in your business. So if you're starting to fail, don't blame other people. Blame yourself. Look inwardly and start realizing that you need to reevaluate the value that you're giving other people. That's, that's what this is all about. You know, it's, it's being, being real, being honest, that it doesn't matter how successful you are, you, you have to go through this hustle and you have yeah. to go through this ups and downs and this emotion. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's times where I had, you know, uh, you know, where, where I've had a client who went through, like I said, one of these turmoils and they have new people or, and we have to renegotiate a contract. And then like, I don't get a seven to $10,000 invoice for like three months. And I've had to, I've had to charge, I've had to use my credit card to pay people. And, you know, it, it sucks when you're having to use your credit card to pay for people and you're struggling and you're trying to pay the bills. Like that was right before I left my other position that kind of take, took place. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, you know what, we might have to move in my grandpa. And I've been there. It's been really challenging. And when you own your own business, there's no one else to blame. There's no one else. And it's not like you can just go down to the bank. And this is something that entrepreneurs struggle with a lot. When you have a job, a J-O-B working at a corporation, guess what? You can go and apply for credit cards and this and that and this and that. But when you're an entrepreneur, they look at you and say, <laughs> right? Like the credit line sucks. So uh, here's one advice I'll give anyone who's got, the, who's got the day job and is transitioning to entrepreneurship. While you have the day job, get some credit lines lined up. Okay, get some credit lines lined up. Don't have anything on them or maybe, you know, buy groceries with it and then pay it off in, within the 30 days so you don't get charged. Like, make sure that you have some credit because boy, when you leave that day job and your credit lines start uh, cleaning up, thank God for me, I was able to, to do all that in advance. But, you know, I have several credit cards and my credit's over 800 now. But 
if you are an entrepreneur, credit is so important. That's all I can say. And that's, that's actually a funny story of mine too. I mean, I worked hard on my credit before I quit. I, I think I was at 780. And so, you know, let's do it. I, I mean, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm never going to use credit again. So I quit. And then it turns out I need a credit line. Nobody's going <laughs> to yeah. give me anything and now. now. You get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I applied. Like, they're like, where's your pay stub? You're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you mean? <laughs> and see, the funny thing is I jump online and I had a good relationship with some banks. So I applied online before they even noticed that I wasn't working. There was no paycheck. I mean, I still had the last one because it was between the two weeks. Uh, so I got, I got three credit cards right at one after another is like, let's do it. So I maxed them out. I opened my own store and right now my credit is 600 points. Yeah. Well, so I was like, oh, I oh, well. remember what I said earlier to anyone who's listening here. What he said, don't do that. Uh, right, right. <laughs> when I, open your credit accounts and then you buy groceries with them and then you don't, pay- don't, don't max them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't max them out. Just keep them nice and light. Right, like, right. There you go. You just want to have them there just in case. That's all. Very cool, man. So changing gears a little bit here on your story, it looks like to me that you know you're very happy you're loving what you're doing and you're definitely very successful with everything helping. And, you know, you, you, you made it, man, you really made that transition and you made it and you have the lifestyle you, you, you want it. What do you think is that secret of success that you have for all the listeners that are listening to us? Huh? Boy. Um, I couldn't have done this without my team. Um, I think that, one of the things that really has separated me from, from other people that I even know in my own industry is that, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they don't walk the walk, right? Um, they talk about these amazing things that they're doing, um, but they don't really live in integrity. And I feel that hurts everyone because how many marketers have you seen on Facebook? You scroll down the list and like my amazing funnel that made me $16,000 a day, you know, and you're like, hmm right? They don't talk about all the the hardship behind it. They don't talk about how they got there. And I think that if you are genuinely going to do this the right way, first off, I'll I'll stop some people right here because I I don't want people to think like, oh, I'm going to go hire a virtual assistant. (laughs) That's not what I want you to do. I want you to look at your business and I want you to really go through and prioritize the things that you should be doing in your business. And for me, I've been able to have a really awesome team to do the stuff that I shouldn't be focused on, but you don't hire anyone until it hurts you as a hustler, you who are starting out your business. If that's what you're doing, if you're just starting out your business, you got to figure out what is really valuable still. And once you have that figured out, that's what you need to do every day. You just have to do the valuable stuff. This is valuable to me. Meeting with you today is super valuable because people get to hear my message. And hopefully I get to change lives by, by, you know, hopefully giving people the, the tools that they need in their own head to get out of their own way. Right. Um, I think that's what has been very successful for everyone that I know who's really successful is that they've been able to get out of their own way. Um, and that's exactly what I, I try to show people how to do is, is at least, you know what, uh, for those of you that are listening right now, um, if you go to nights uh, if you, if you watch, uh, I have a webinar, it's a training that you can, you can check out and you can learn about how to prioritize things that are important. I show you how to find people online to work for you. I show you how the exact same training process that I've used to train all of my VAs so that they can get rid of stuff real easy and they can feel comfortable doing it. I show people how to do that because that's the first step. Um, And then I also have something called the freedom plan that that just for showing up to the webinar they get. It's a PDF you can download and it, and there's a training that goes with it. I usually charge $397 for this. And um, I've been for you and and the people that are here on the hustle show, you guys can have it. Um, I'll make sure to get you that link. So you guys just click below on the link and I'll, I'll be glad to have it for you guys. But what this will allow you to do is really structure your business and structure your life around the things that you should be doing. And that's the real thing that's missing. So many people are busy kicking the rocks when they should be pushing the boulder. I love that, man. And, and yeah, I'll make sure that I get that, that link and we'll put her at the hustle show.co forward slash THS nine. So they can, they can go through it and they can start learning from the master of, of, 
delegation <laughs> and virtual assistants, which I'm actually probably going to be the first one to click that link. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'll tell you what, I'll work on it personally with you, man. I, oh, I cool. want to <laughs> Um, if any of you guys are on the webinar, I, I'm, it's not, I, I don't do auto webinars, guys. When you come on my trainings, my webinars, like I'm there with you and I want to, I genuinely like, I love doing this. So I want to help you guys do it. I, it's something that I've charged my clients thousands of dollars. I actually charged $997 for a, cons, a consultation for my freedom plan that I do live in person with people like one-on-one. -on -one. And I was like, you know what? Like that's something that everyone should do. It's so valuable. It's so important. So I actually give that away. Um, well, I don't give it away. I'm for you guys. I'll, I'll hook you guys up, but it's really something that I, I, I know for a fact I've had so many people come to me afterwards and they send me their freedom plans and they're just like, Oh my God. Yes. You know, like I finally know what I need to do in my life that helps you identify the repetitive things in your business, the things that are neglected, the things you should be doing, but you're not. And talks about the puzzling things and how to actually solve that. And then the most important piece, which is the value. What are the most valuable things that you do in your business, in your life that drive you forward and keep you motivated? Because it's all about living life in flow. The things that you do every day, can you wake up every day and say, I want to do this for the rest of my life? And if it's not, then you're probably not doing it right. That's exactly right. And, and we talk it over and over and over again. That's the reason why I'm doing this too, is because this is my passion. This is what's waking mm -hmm. me up every morning. And, and that's how everybody that is listening to us right now should focus on going after their passion and not after the money. Mm, amen. And you know what? The money will follow you, follow you as long as the value is there. Make sure that the value is there. Very true. All right. So moving from your story now to what I like to call the hassle round, <laughs> play a little word game with you and see how, if we can step you out of your comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> Basically, I'm just going to throw a word at you and you, whatever word comes to mind, one single word, uh, you throw it back at me and see how you do. How does that sound? Yes. I like games. Let, let's do it. Hustle. Hmm. No, thanks. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great answer. Man. Work. Freedom. Employee. Leader. Boss. Hmm. Don't like boss. Ooh, if it's supposed to be one word, hmm. Ooh, that's when I should have said leader. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to say on that one, I take back employee to team member and boss to leader. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Rules. Hmm. Broken. College. Useful, somewhat. <laughs> Fear. Ooh, paralysis. Weakness. Strength. Now the word strength. <laughs> <laughs> Overcome. Motivation. <sighs> Inspiration. And last but not least, books lifeblood i love it man wow that was that was a good round man <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did pretty time. well you did pretty well i i spend two to three hours a day in personal development whether it be books audiobooks uh trainings i i i believe that we should never be satisfied with who we are and every day we should wake up a better version of ourselves i love that so before we leave here the call with all the hustlers and everybody that is listening or watching on our youtube channel how can people connect with you, man? How can they, you know, find out more about you if they need help with their, with their business and they're trying to outsource things? How can they get in touch with you? Two different ways, guys. Um, if you are really interested in uh, building your own team, then I would check out 9010life.com. It, it really talks about that freedom. And it, I, I do this training that literally shows you guys the exact steps that I've used. Um, to, to basically 10x income for my clients because they're able to focus on the things that are more valuable in their businesses instead of the stuff that's really below their pay grade. Um, and then obviously you can check out my blog, jeffjhunter.com. Uh, I have some really cool tools on there for you guys. Um, I'm, actually a I'm actually wearing my travel expert shirt today. 
Um, I love to travel um, and uh, I, I love sharing my experiences around the world and also uh, anything that about leadership, uh, virtual teams. That's the kind of stuff that I really live for. Um, I'd love to share with you guys. Connect with me on, on Facebook. You know, the old saying, Google me, Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, the letter J and then Hunter, Jeff, J, Hunter, just Google me. I love it. And we'll, we'll make sure that we link all this and the goodies that you're going to share with us at the hustle show co forward slash T H S nine. So they can just click in there and connect with you right away. Yeah. But, you know, just, just want to thank you, man. Thank you so much. Very grateful to have you here at the show today. You gave us some really good golden nuggets as far as outsourcing, but you know, we wanted to hear that, that struggles and those ups and downs that you went through to build this amazing and incredible company. And, you know, kudos to you. We're, I'm very proud of you. I know there's big success to where you're headed and, you know, you're gonna, you're about to explode. So keep, keep hustling, man. No, oh, thank you so much. And you know what? Uh, I, I really do appreciate your hustle, man. I see you everywhere. You're doing your thing. This is really amazing. And I wish you a, a ton of success on this. And, and I can't wait to share this uh, with my audience. So have a good one. So there you have it, the story of Jeff Hunter, the anti-hustler that came on to the Hustle show. And, you know, I, I, was, I was very excited to hear his story and to connect with Jeff. And, you know, I, I learned a lot with him and hopefully we can do some things together as the Hustle show starts to grow and starts to require more resources more than what it's requiring right now. But, you know, I, I hope you, you feel this inspiration of, of Jeff, of how getting well paid on a job doesn't necessarily mean that it's fulfilling and is, is making you happy and it, it's the lifestyle that you want. So hopefully you take action from his story and you get inspired to do whatever you, you, you dream of and you go after it. Okay, so because that's the purpose of the Hassle Show, to inspire you by bringing you entrepreneurial stories to make you accountable and to take action on whatever idea you have and hit that subscribe button right now right now is a perfect moment to hit it and you will be helping a lot of people find the show and not only that but you will also get notified every time the hustle show episodes go live okay keep hustling guys thanks so much for tuning in to the hustle show audio experience i hope you enjoyed today's episode and even if you didn't make sure you subscribe to the podcast right now it's still free visit the hustle show.co for all the show notes and to watch the video experience of this episode we'll see you soon